My life was really boiling down to nothing. It slowly progressed from getting kicked out of school to being suspended, expelled, and then just hauling me off to jail. I started drinking. My dad used to beat the crap out of me, and then he just stopped feeding me. And after that, I just went out to the streets. I was abusing drugs. I was in and out of jail, and my life was out of control. I've been drinking since like 11 or 12. Then I went from drinking to doing marijuana, then to doing cocaine. But I guess when I actually became gang affiliated, I got more into it. I would be with them 24-7. I wouldn't go to school at all. I was in a gang, and the gang was just showing me that I could continue smoking and just keep coming out, going in and out of jail. And it was like a revolving door. Every year, over 50,000 juveniles are arrested in New York. Alcohol and drug abuse is usually at the root of their problems. Some people argue that the best way to deal with juvenile offenders is to lock them up. In New York City, it now costs over $200,000 to hold a juvenile in custody for just one year, and the price is escalating fast. Even more distressing, studies show that over 75% of all juveniles remanded to New York State custody were arrested again for a felony or misdemeanor crime, and 42% committed a violent felony. So what are the alternatives to juvenile incarceration? The following explores such an option. Welcome to the future of juvenile rehabilitation. Welcome to Outreach House. My name is Ray Ortiz. I'm a former resident and graduate of Outreach House. Just like many kids in neighborhoods like this, I was a 14-year-old in trouble with no direction and no motivation. Thanks to Outreach House, I had an opportunity through the system to have a chance, to have a chance to change my life, get some values, and I didn't know I would have that chance until I walked through these doors. Outreach House is really a unique program and the model has continually evolved to involve families, to involve education, to involve aftercare, to involve the community. So we're, we, we exist and we're giving those kids a second chance on life rather than them being put upstate in some residential jail where essentially the state is gonna spend lots of money and they're gonna get no, no impact on turning these kids' lives around and giving them a value system where they're gonna be able to go out in the world and become constructive citizens. First, rehab to me sounded ridiculous. It was like, I don't need rehab, I'm okay. The short-term goal with the kids is to get the kids off of substances. And the longer-term goal is generally to build communication within the family system. They started helping me with my communication with my mom because I didn't talk to anybody from my family. My dad left us and I was the only person I was actually close to. So actually now I'm very, very, very close with my mom. My mother comes to see me and I was surprised. She was never there. Like I go to court by myself. I have to have one of my older friends come pick up my report card from school. Like surprising for her to come to the parent support groups and stuff. None of the family contact that goes on in this model could possibly go on in a juvenile model where the kids are 200 miles away upstate. Before, he don't have patience. He don't talk with me. He, he don't share with me. Now, he's patient. Please, mom, can we do this? He's so sad. I don't know how to play. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. The youngsters in this facility have a very long day. They wake up early in the morning. They have work responsibilities. They clean their facility. They help cook the food. They handle the communication. They do the laundry. They do all the things that a responsible young adult would do in a family system. A lot of the kids are, are followers, not leaders. One of the things that they do learn here is that they do have leadership qualities. They, we just need to hone in so that they can become the people that they want to become. I found that I'm really smart. I do love math, science, literature, and history. And I love to read, I'm a good speaker, and that's a beautiful thing to find because I found this all within here. I came in here with a really low self-esteem, and um, I'm, I'm doing very good in school, really good. But some things will change, some won't, and I realized that I did. I changed a lot. I've done better in school, got high grades, um, I've gotten a better relationship with my family and I have, you know, everything about me 
I feel it's just better. If I was still outside, I wouldn't even have been going to school. I missed the last three years of school. So it's kind of like, it offered me a better education. After I finished getting my GED, hopefully I could go to college. I feel wonderful because I know this place has given me a lot of um, opportunities that I probably would have never had. At Outreach House, the peer community is structured where kids entering the facility uh, are expected to learn from kids who've been here longer. And the longer you're here, the more responsibility you have for, for self-management and the more responsibility you have for managing those below you. And it's the dynamic of that process and the structure of the facility that challenges kids to make responsible, healthy, organized decisions, which for many of them is the first time that's ever happened in their life. What they learn here from the peers that they do get involved with is that I can be me and, and that I have something bigger to aspire to in life than using drugs and alcohol. I really didn't have a clue what a goal was, but to just get high and now I have real goals. Going to school, um, having a new social network, and actually becoming somebody. Well, Outreach House taught me to love myself, determination, perseverance. Um, it gave me more strength. It gave me, like, a chance to start again. I feel that, that everybody deserves a second chance. I went from somebody that was doing drugs, selling drugs, gang banging, and made a complete U-turn and changed my life around. Jail doesn't help you in any way. In here, it's like you come to outreach, you, you work on yourself, you try to improve your behaviors, improve relationships. You don't just come out, you come out better. Thanks to Outreach House, I finished high school, went to the Army, went back to college, and I even managed to start my own business. Outreach House gave me that opportunity to believe in myself, to see what I could give to society and become a better person at the same time. I think that every child deserves a chance, and I think that every family deserves a chance to change. I just, I just don't think that incarceration is an option. Although some of our kids have been incarcerated, and, um, and you know, when they talk to me about what they've gone through, I often think, you know, no child should have really had to go through that, particularly given some of the things that these kids have already been through on the street. I would love to see programs like this all over. My wish for those who are taking a look at Outreach House is for you to celebrate the miracles of the kids in this facility turning their lives around. But my wish doesn't stop there. My wish is that you'll begin to create a, a vision where any kid, particularly kids from your community, would have a second chance on life at 13, 14, or 15 years old, as opposed to being consigned to the, a juvenile system where they're gonna learn how to be a, a good criminal and are gonna learn how to be part of a subculture. And we're gonna waste money and waste lives